In this video, I'm taking you to Uzbekistan, Bukhara, Poikalyan complex, so many other beautiful places in this historical city. Let's start. Nothing and no one prepared me for the beauty of Bukhara at night. Welcome to Uzbekistan. I am arriving in Bukhara from Samarkand, another prized jewel on the Silk Road. If you haven't checked the video, the link is above. Welcome to Bukhara, one of the most revered and important cities on the Silk Road. The city is an open air museum that will blow your mind by just walking around in it. I promise you. I'm here to show you some of the best things you can see, how to enjoy this amazing architecture. I'm here for almost two days. And I'm gonna make the best of it to see as much as possible. And if you follow me exactly, you will get to see the most of it as well with the best light, I promise you. So let's start this amazing journey. I got an amazing welcome to Bukhara. I've left my bag in the hotel and we are heading right to our first stop. Just around sunset at Nadir Beki Madrasa, there is a little uh, singing, dancing show and you can call and book them because it's quite a lot of tour groups, so it's really busy. But it's a good chance to get to know the, the singing and the dancing and also they show you the regional clothes as well. I'll show you just a little bit. <laughs> The show was really entertaining. I got some food and now it's time to roam around a little bit before I head to the hotel. Nothing and no one prepared me for the beauty of Bukhara at night. Look at this behind me. <laughs> I am actually really tired and I really want to sleep, but I just, it's almost like I don't want to shut my eyes because it feels like a dream how beautiful this is. Let me show you a little bit more, but walking around at night is a must in Bukhara. It's absolutely beautiful. It's going to be a long, fun day tomorrow, so I'm going to get some sleep. See you in the morning. Good morning. I slept amazing. It's time to start that tour of Bukhara now. We are going to start the tour with Charminor. So Charminor means four minarets. You can see right behind me why it's called that. But the mysterious thing about this is, one, this is not a typical architectural style from here, and two, no one really knows when or why it was built. Some people think it's like a gateway to a madrasa, but can't be sure. But it's definitely a fascinating character and a little bit of a walk out. And I would definitely recommend coming here in the morning so you get good light with some good photos. And you can also go on top of this, so let's go check it out. Notice all four minarets are different from each other. They don't have the same design. At each destination, I really like a building and I get completely obsessed by it. And this was my obsession for Bukhara. We are heading to our next stop. Bukhara used to be full of ponds, like the one you see right behind me. This is Layabi Hawes. Hawes means a pond. So back in the day, they used to use these uh, ponds to store water, but because these are stagnant, there were a lot of you know diseases. And because of that, the average age of a Bukharan was around 32 years only. So when the Soviets took over, they drained a lot of these ponds. I don't know whether this one was restored or this one just stayed, but this is the only one now. So you can come around, you know, sit, have some tea. It's a very popular tourist destination, especially at night. Anyone growing up in a Persian and Urdu-speaking household have heard of Khaja Nasruddin. 
when I was younger, I heard a lot of jokes, these little clips, you know, the stories of him and his donkey. He acts foolish, but to teach you some valuable life lessons. And I'm forever thankful for him for teaching me quite a few when I was younger. And it's so nice to see him in his own hometown of Bukhara. Don't miss him when you come here and do Google some of his jokes. It's actually quite fun. I was walking from the Char Minor towards the old city and then I met this gentleman who was, told me to come see this place which is a house museum but it's like a hodgepodge of things and the best thing is you can see the old architecture here which is really nice especially around the ceilings, the pillars, the rest of it, the stuff is kind of like you know from Soviet era, it's like a mix of things but if you have some more time and if you want to you know go around see the actual architecture which has not been um, re uh, refurbished or has not been restored this is a good place to come don't forget to ask him for the ticket price in advance do you like more amazing off the beaten path travel destinations to inspire you don't forget to hit that subscribe button i am at the team abdullah khan trading domes and these domes were sort of the commercial center, sort of the markets. So you will see quite a few of them around the city. The best thing is you don't have to actually make an effort. Just walking around, you will come across at least one of them. But these ones are really cool. If you want to buy some souvenirs from here, a little handy tip, you'll have to haggle a little bit and offer at least, you know, 30, 40% lower and you'll get a good price. Our next stop, two special buildings. The style you see is called Mukarnas and it comes from Iran or Persia. And most of the population in Bukhara still speaks Farsi, by the way. I am in the Kosh Madrasa or the Twin Madrasas as they're called. So this is Abdulaziz Madrasa where I am standing and it's a courtyard of that. The one opposite is the Uluq Beg Madrasa. Both have beautiful facades, but if you notice on the Abdulaziz Khan on which I'm standing, it has an, a half complete uh, facade because when the person who was building it wanted to impress even more than the Uluq Beg, but he died halfway through and it was left incomplete. Quite an interesting story. If you want to skip the courtyards, you can definitely do that because um, you've been inside one, you've been inside pretty much all of them. But this one is good if you want to see how the students used to live. Walking around Bukhara, you will come across these. These are called Suzeni and they are something very special for Bukhara. They're handmade and a small one like this would take months to make. So even if you don't want to buy one, I want you to stop, appreciate how colorful, beautiful these patterns are and how much of hard work that goes into these. I'm inside the Oluk Beg Madrasa and this is much better restored compared to the other one. So yeah, definitely do come into this courtyard and the ticket covers both madrasas by the way. Bukhara is hot but there's a little respite from all of that in the form of the Silk Road Tea House. Now, Chai Khana or Tea House is a rich tradition from Silk Road because this is where people would sit and share stories. So this family is keeping the tradition alive. You can even buy the spices from them, which they still trade and get from a lot of different parts of the Silk Road. So I'm gonna enjoy this tea, which I would recommend getting the spice tea, which is the best. This is my second cup and they come with some uh, sweets which are really nice by the way. This is not uh, a sweet, it's actually sugar and usually you just put it inside, roll it around and make your tea sweet. So that's the way to do it. Bukhara gets really hot during the day and at that time it is best to come to the Setori Moki Kosa Palace. Now this used to be the summer palace of the emirs and the way it was chosen was quite interesting. So they put meat around a few different places and where the meat got rotten last, that's where they chose to be the summer palace 
and it's also quite different from the traditional architecture because he sent the artists to Russia so that they could create a mix of Eastern and Western architectures. So inside you will see some porcelain from Japan, from Russia, you know, the entire structure, a little bit like, you know, a little bit of Western style in here. Sadly, it was destroyed and then when the Soviets took over, they converted it into a museum, which it sort of is like now as well. But the reason for coming here is not just to escape the heat, but to enjoy the interior of this absolutely beautiful, beautiful palace. It's a 15 minutes drive from the city and the driver only charged us like $2. If you're wondering why I haven't taken you to the best spot in Bukhara, I was waiting for the golden light. Let's go check out the Poyakalyan complex. I'm sitting in Poyakalyan complex and this is the beating heart of Bukhara. Now, this place is really important not just because of the architecture but because of a lot of the symbolism. Now on that side of me is the uh, Kalam mosque. You can go inside, it's a beautiful grand mosque. This is the symbol of Bukhara, the Kalan Tower, the only structure that survived Genghis Khan. And there are multiple stories attached to it, including one that I kind of like, that he saw it from a distance riding every day, grew so fond of it that he actually decided not to touch it. And this behind me is the Mir Arab Madrasa, which is a running madrasa, which means you can't go inside unless you're a student. Now, this place is really important for Muslims. They actually call it Bukhara Sharif or the Noble Bukhara because it produced so many astronomers, scientists, a lot of the poets and philosophers of the day. And more important than that, Sahih Bukhari, the second holiest book for Sunni Muslims. The author was born in Bukhara. So Bukhari Sharif, his name is. And that's why it's, the city is considered almost sacred. Wasn't I right to bring you here in the golden hour? The place glistens with the beautiful golden light. The sun starts to go down behind the mosque and the light filters through the door and falls on the beautiful facade of Mir Arab Madrasa. Once I've had my fill looking around the beautiful Kalam Mosque, it is time to head to the nearby rooftop where we're gonna watch the sunset on this beautiful place. There's so much more to Uzbekistan than just Samarkand. Don't forget to check my Uzbekistan playlist for some amazing travel tips and also food recommendations. Click on the link above. Another beautiful day sets on Bukhara. It is time to get some rest. See you in the morning. Wake up early and you will be greatly rewarded. Look behind me. Not a single soul in the entire square. People start coming after 10. I am going to experience a little bit of history for myself. Bukhara is one of the oldest hammams in the entire world and you can actually visit and use the hammam. There's no way I was gonna miss that. Let's go check it out. The hammam has been refurbished, but it's still quite a basic affair. I had a great massage though. The guy was really, really thorough and it was quite painful at the time, but I felt really relaxed afterwards. All happy and relaxed, it is time to hit my last three spots in Bukhara. And the first one is going to be the Ark of Bukhara. The Ark of Bukhara is the grandest structure in all of this beautiful city, as columns alone are just wow. And I really like that they have like these tapered uh, walls for the entire structure. Now, I went inside, and honestly, apart from the throne room and its ceiling, I didn't really do enjoy it that much because the other buildings that have way better interiors. So if you are interested in exhibitions like the jewelry, which also quite liked, uh, coins or the history, definitely step inside. It's a little museum. 
But other than that, if you're short on time or you want to save some money, you can skip this one. Behind me is the Bolo Hoz Mosque or the 40 Pillar Mosque as it's also called. Now there are actually only 20 of these wooden pillars but you can see the reflection in this beautiful pond and that's why it's called the 40 Pillar Mosque. Another thing that separates this mosque from others is that there's no boundary. It's an open air mosque. Each of these columns is carved separately. Most buildings in Bukhara come with an explosion of color, ceramics, tiles. This is quite unique though. This is the mausoleum of Ismail Samani from the Samanid Empire. And this one is unique because of its brickwork, the intricate, the beautiful brickwork that creates these beautiful patterns which make it one of my favorite buildings in Bukhara. I'm really not happy about this, but it's time to say goodbye to Bukhara. Two days I don't think are enough to experience this beautiful city. So I would recommend three at the minimum so you can absorb all this, I mean, amazingness of this beautiful city. But we're not done with Uzbekistan yet. Click on the link above and meet me in Kheva where there's a lot more that awaits us. I promise you, you will be impressed. <music>